Okay. Uh, hi everybody. Welcome to my second uh, second video. Um, no, third video. We're going to be making a rockabilly style dress for myself and for my daughter. So there's a festival coming up where people dress up in rockabilly style, and yeah, I wanna. I've been to it before, and I wanted to join in this year. Yeah, so I've got three weeks to make a dress for myself from scratch. Let's get started. My daughter's dress, kind of pre-made. Well, it's a dress that I made for her. It just has real like, auntie sleeves, an elastic back. I want to basically keep the skirt and redo most of the top, and then also put some inserts in here. I'll show you my my design. I just looked on Pinterest for like 1950s, 1960s um, dresses, dress patterns, and then I just drew the ones that I liked. And same for the girls. And even I did a little boy's one because I have a two-year-old son. Oh, he would just look so cute. That, that little one is like a it's like red pants, and then the jacket is red and white stripes. It just looks so cute for my daughter. So this one, these are the inserts. There's two lines going right around the bottom of the skirt, but those are not going to be black. I colored them in black just to see, but I think the original idea was to make them white. So I'm going to stick with that. And then she just has like this gigantic bow, like right up here. Yeah, so that's the design. So that's her dress. So this is where I made my first big mistake and that was with these inserts. I calculated like how much space I needed, where to cut, how wide I wanted the inserts, etc, etc. And then after cutting, I don't know how far I got along this with this little bit, but I realized it would have been so much easier to just lay a piece of white ribbon on top of the skirt and sew it down. No cutting, no calculating, would have been so much easier. But yeah, you can uh, you can watch me do it the hard way. I mean, for future like inserts, sure I learned a little bit, but this was, this was so complicated and so unnecessary. So yeah, first uh, first mistake, first learning curve. There you go. And here I just removed the old sleeves from the dress that I previously made. Um, I think I ended up using those to make the inserts that I'm showing you. Just to make the dress a bit bigger because it was uh, already a bit small for my daughter. And also with the inserts, they would have been a lot less crinkly looking if I had just gotten a nice white satin ribbon or something. But it's fine for what it is. Cheese. Cheese. So I made a little mock-up for my daughter's jacket just because I had like very little left of the pink material and then I could also just try it on her because this was also a new pattern that I was making from scratch. Yeah it only took a couple tries to get it to get the mock-up in the right size and shape and then I could make everything with the pink material. Um, I finished my daughter's dress it's pink and it's very cute <laughs> and over the top, but it's finished. I have a two-year-old son and he is a little bit jealous of his sister's dress. He's two and a half, so it's hard to work out exactly what he's saying, but he definitely wants his own outfit. I found this material. It made me think of like a racing flag, like the Finnish flag for racing. And my son loves cars, so that was, I thought would also suit like rockabilly style. So he'll have blue shorts and a chick jacket. I think they'll look pretty cute. Yeah, so I'm gonna dive in to try and do the boys one and see if I can finish that today. So 
So the shorts were pretty easy to make because I used a knit fabric which is just stretchy and really forgiving. And the most difficult part was this where I made the um, like triangular top part. I'm not sure what you call it but I um, wanted it to be a little bit more supported so I made a, um, I think it's called an insert but yeah. Um, I did that just to help with a bit of the shape and then made some long straps to do buttons for and yeah I made the long straps to do the buttons for it and then that was pretty much done. Oh so for the jacket I didn't film a lot of this jacket because I was making it in like I basically did this whole jacket in like 24 hours maybe just over the weekend patterned it out I don't think I even I had a lot of the material so I didn't make a mock-up but the first difficulty was, I think I showed you there, that the back seam of the jacket, the black and white check squares didn't line up perfectly, so you could see it, it looked a bit weird. So I um, like I cut out a new piece for the top part of the back of the jacket and um, made sure I lined it up and then I cut out the pattern again. And then even when I was hemming around the bottom of the jacket, I made sure to, um, I used black thread I think, and then I just made sure to only sew through the black squares so that you couldn't see any any of the hem. Yeah, and then it came out pretty easy. All I had to do was make it deck it a little bit shorter and I think the sleeves a little bit smaller and then it was fine. And with these little pockets, I did the same thing where I lined up the pattern I wanted so that they would blend in seamlessly. So you kind of can't even tell that they're there, which is cool, like a cool trick, but also if you bought the jacket somehow, like you wouldn't, you might not even realize that there's pockets. And then I just added these little stars for the buttons. They're not like very practical, but my son likes stars, so, so there you go. And now it's time for the reveal. Okay, so today I finally got some material. So I was looking for just a black sequin material for the top and then uh, like a transparent black for the sleeves. Because I think it will look nice because it holds a bit of its shape. I think this like matte sequin abstract pattern is a little bit more like elevated than just straight shiny sequins. So we've got some fabric and I already have the black silk. It's like bed sheets. So this is what I came up with. It's like a combination of one of the dresses that I liked. The top has a really wide open neckline but then I really like the sleeves because they were this, this transparent. I think it was white the original design but I'm gonna do it in black. So uh, welcome to how to cut out a circle skirt with a toddler. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Watch out for the pin. Yeah. Hurt. But yeah. It was it was very cute. It just hey. Hey. Pins and he was pretty good at doing that. <laughs> but he just like constantly asks what what am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> Which is very cute. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're way better than 
I just tried to cut out as many of these quarter circle shape. They're like that's half circle, that's that's a half circle, and then that's a quarter circle and a half circle. A little bit unbalanced there in terms of the, the circles, but kind of worked out. And I just made some big, big pockets. They're massive, like yeah, they're almost like this handbag size, <laughs> which is great. Hi everybody. I have a semi completed skirt here. Let's see what we're working with. Um, so it's just a circle skirt, maybe like one and a half times circle skirt. So it's got a lot of it's got a lot of swirl in it. I still have to finish the back, but I think it looks it looks fine. It was a bit tricky to keep the waistband to sit fairly smoothly, and I added it in an extra seam over here so that I can put a pocket in because I've made those, but there was no the seam was kind of in the front here, whereas I want the pocket over there. So I'm gonna make it like a mesh petticoat to give it a bit more volume. So I'm happy that the skirt worked out pretty quick. I just have to fix the hem. So here quickly, because of like the weight of the skirt, the best way was to have the skirt hang for 24 hours and then you can measure properly where you want your hem because as the material hangs then it stretches. Then you can actually see, like I could visibly see that the hem was fairly straight. Okay. So my skirt is pretty much finished with pockets. I have hemmed it, but it's not finished. So, but I have a mock-up done, and this is my second one. Okay. Actually, so the issue with the first mock-up was that the shoulders were sitting like off the shoulder, because I need these to be uh, on the shoulder, but as wide as possible. Okay, so I just recorded everything and then it stopped. So, let's start again. Um, well, this is where we are now. I'm really happy with how the back the back looks. It's uh, shape is fine, but the front, this is too like sharp. It needs to go kind of maybe start a bit lower and then um, go out more to the shoulder. Yeah, it is kind of sit more there. This is like sequin stretch velvet. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's stretchy, it's velvet, and then it has these sequins which just make it really hard for the sewing machine to get the needle through. Yeah, but we got there slowly.
So I um, thought it was a good idea to film with the bathroom fan on, but it was not. So I'm going to voice over this. So I was thinking about cutting the neckline down this way and then move the collar down. Yeah, I thought that would be a lot more flattering. But it's not exactly the same as my original design, but it definitely looks nicer. And this is me thinking about making a bag with the sequin material. It's stretchy and I could just like cover my handbag. Um, and then here, I had to wrap up quickly. So here I'm showing you how I made the petticoat. Well, not how I made it, just I wanted you to see how awkward it is to sew this much pink mesh material. It felt like I was being like just swallowed whole by this fabric when I was trying to sew it. And it didn't really matter how it looked because it doesn't, it didn't need to be pretty. It just needed to hold the right shape. Yeah, and in regards to the bag, I did end up making a bag from scratch, but it was quite like sort of DIY where I just used cardboard to hold the shape and then covered that in the same fabric that I used for my son's jacket. But yeah, I was in such a rush that I didn't film any of that. But yeah, let me know if you'd like to see a how to make your own handbag tutorial. Because I was pretty pleased with how it came out. Next time I could use like a um, plastic, some like plastic sheets and cut out the shape from there. Yeah, now you just get to see the bag that I made in the reveal. So here is the second reveal. So we're finished. So I'm happy with how it came out. I think it kind of like sneaks into the rockabilly style uh, theme and it is like a 1960s like pattern but it is obviously with like modern materials. I think I learned a fair amount in terms of like constructing a garment from scratch. Yeah so I made, I made plenty of mistakes. <laughs> Yeah, we went from having like a front opening here to have a back opening. I had my dress sitting out for a few, probably a couple of months, and um, my children found some scissors and they gracefully, or whatever, cut a hole right here. I have to like redo the whole sleeve. I'm not doing that, so yeah. Anyways. Yeah, but I'm also happy with how the, the kids' ones came out. The boys' like little pants, they're cute, but they're not. They do look kind of strange, being so like high-waisted, but they were at least like stretchy material, so you could move in them fine. But the jacket was a little bit tight, it's quite a stiff material. My daughter's dress came out well, I did the big mistake of <laughs> cutting inserts into the skirt, where I could have just laid a ribbon all the way around and sewn it on top. But yeah, I hope you enjoy watching, um, let me know if you like the video. I should hopefully be back in a couple months with another, another one of my creations. Both yeah. Let me know if you liked it. Um, if you like, if you agree that it's rockabilly or not. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye. Um, what do I want to say? Oh gosh, I hate silence. I'm flattering. Hey. No. Um, Okay, so intro complete. Yeah, whatever this hand is. Like just a small one. Wow. Imagine we keep that in the video.